All right, so it's time for us to begin. And uh, I am very grateful that we get to share on this Sunday. Thank you for joining uh, us today. And uh, very grateful to have this opportunity to offer inspiration and to be the living, breathing inspiration that we share. So I am going to turn it over to Sarah Shearer, who is here to be our a prayer practitioner. And she is going to start us off with a prayer. Sarah's been in Masterful Living uh, several years. She's in the prayer practitioner training, the spiritual counseling training. And she is uh, a, a, a counselor that people have been able to have real help from. And she is a bright light in our community and a teacher here in this community, and I'm so glad you're here today, Sarah. Thank you, Jennifer. So good to see everybody, and so good to be here today. And I'm just going to invite everyone to place their hands on their hearts if you feel comfortable. And let's tune into the vibration of gratitude. We are so grateful and thankful to be joined together today and to partner up with our higher Holy Spirit selves and to be open today to hear the inspirational messages from Jennifer and the beautiful music from Todd, knowing that their messages are heard, that we are inspired, and that we are going to go forth today with shifts, with changes, with inspiration that we're going to, that we are carrying forward into our lives. We offer up any blocks to hearing it, any blocks to love, any blocks to the Holy Spirit's presence, and we declare the healing is already done. We declare that being here today is for the highest and the best for ourselves and for everyone that we know. And in gratitude, we go forth, we allow it to be, and we share the benefits of this healing with everyone today. And so it is. Amen. 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 That was beautiful. Thank you so much, Sarah. Really powerful. All right, so uh, I am grateful to introduce here Ted Swartz, and uh, let me just add you there, and I am going to uh, tell you that it, Ted is someone I've known for a few years now, he has been a part of the Masterful Living community, and he is uh, on a journey of more than 70 years, and in this journey, he's had an array of life-changing events, uh, living in a blended family with Mary Ellen, his wife, and they have six adult children, 18 grandchildren and one great grand. Uh, he has lost uh, a previous wife and other close family members. He's experienced bankruptcy and cancer. In addition, he has experienced many amazing blessings such as a very successful business, his songwriting, he's a prolific songwriter, and the, of course, Miracles community. He is the leader of our men's ministry, the Power of Love ministry. He's also a leader in the bereavement ministry, uh, that support group. He finds songwriting to be a light out of the darker events of life and the celebration of his many blessings. And he's also my yoga partner. We do yoga online most days of the week. Been doing that for a couple of years now. And uh, I love when he comes and joins us on the Sunday. So thank you for being here and sharing your inspiring music, Ted. I love it. That's a lot of words for a bald guy. Uh, that that's uh, I appreciate it though, Jennifer. It's it's a blessing for me to be here. Um, as Jennifer mentioned, I've been writing music for decades and decades and decades. Um, but I I'm not in a band. I don't uh, even though I'm part of a writers group. I don't try to go out there and do. Uh, just because I write songs doesn't mean I need a career in it. Uh, I just write it. And this particular song I chose to open with is for Valentine's Day. We've got it, it's coming real soon. And um, I don't get a chance to sing this song very often. Uh, um, so I decided I'll share it with you today.
Well, here within my heart are gifts I have for you. Gifts to see us through the coming years. And you can feel free to open anyone you please In a row as far as the eye can see Open one or two on those rainy days Three or four if your heart's in pain here for you to see us through and to show that I love you yes here within my heart our gift I have for you gifts to see us through the coming years and you can feel free to open anyone you see in a row as far as the eye can see some you'll find are just for play others full of thanks and praise some with a prayer all wrapped with care just to show I love you is here within my heart our gifts I have for you gifts to see us through the coming years and you can feel free to open anyone you please in a row as far as the eye can see they're here for you to see us through and to show I love you too <laughs> hope that came through okay it did it did more than okay uh thank you so much ted i always love it when you're here it's such a blessing to hear your music that comes straight from the heart yeah straight from the heart okay. thank you yep <laughs> all right so it's super bowl sunday and i'm having a super spiritual sunday because uh, I just did a three hour workshop and that, that was awesome. The uh, eliminate your resistance and reluctance, powerful. And I feel so blessed that I get to do what I love. Uh, Ted mentioned Valentine's Day there. And uh, I remember writing, it's one of my favorite things that I ever wrote I uh, just came right through me that I'm in love with the one who invented love and the one who invented love is in love with me. And uh, it, uh, it just feels so real and true. I, I am in love with the one who invented love and the one who invented love is in love with me. And it's true for all of us. It's true for every single one of us. Yeah, I am in love with the one who invented love and the one who invented love is in love with me. Love is what we are. And so we're in love together. Mm. And I also, I love what Shakespeare has written about love, that love is not love which alters when it alteration finds nor bends with a remover to remove. It is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It's one of the sonnets. 
And so love is not love, which uh, alters when it alteration finds. So if we learn something about somebody that, oh, now I'm not in love with them. Oh, I don't love you anymore. Well, then there was never love in the first place. And so as Course in Miracles students, we're very aware of special relationship versus holy relationship. And um, oh, sorry, Joanne, can you put that in the general chat? Um, because I, I can't figure that out right now. Thank you. Um, but if you put it in the general chat, then we can, someone can help you. Um, so we have this belief that we fall in and out of love, that love is a temporary condition, right? But as Course in Miracles students, we know that's not true that indeed uh, love is like it says in that sonnet, an ever fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. And the wonderful thing about realizing that you, you know you love someone, not because of any condition, but you just, you love them. That's all there is to it. You just love them, regardless of what they do or don't do. You completely love them. You may not love everything they do, but you love them. And love is our healer because love is what we are. So when we are being loving, it heals all manner of illnesses. It heals all manner of illnesses. We are often looking for a methodology to heal the problems and the dysfunctions and the illnesses in our life. And we're looking for a solution in the world. And love is so powerful, but it's not coming to us from the world. It's coming through us and we can express it in the world. And so that's the thing I invite you to start to think about what could love heal in your life? You, you, now it's our being loving that brings forth the healing. And when we're being loving, very often others around us are inspired to be loving as well. And so it begins to magnify and multiply and ripple out and it's often easy to love people who are being loving. It's easy to appreciate them, to recognize them, to give thanks for them, and to return that love. Because oftentimes, people who are being loving are also receptive to love. You know, one of the great things about having pets, dogs, cats, etc. Arthur, can you help Joanne there? please. Um, just read the chat. Um, that you, when, when you have an animal like that, uh, we think, you know, on the surface, it looks like, well, they're so helpful to us because uh, they're loving us. You know, a dog loves unconditionally. Cats, we're not so sure about, but dogs, I mean, my cat is so loving it's crazy um i mean he's just i i call him mr snuggles um he just always wants to rub his face on my face it's just like i love you i love you i love you <laughs> so sweet but dogs are you know very loving and so the the um thing idea is that Dogs are so wonderful because they love us. But the secret is, if you will, the unseen thing is about dogs. It's not that they love us so much, that they love us unconditionally. It's that they allow us to love them fully, completely, unconditionally, right? Most dogs, if you want to love on them, 
they will let you forever. They will never say, I've had enough. They just, in fact, a lot of dogs will be like, no, I don't think you're done yet. Keep going, keep going. I'll let you know when to stop, right? They just keep coming back for more, for more, for more, for more, for more. They just want to receive that maximum quantity of love. And that's so unlike people. Uh, there aren't many people that feel really comfortable receiving, 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 receiving the love, right? We don't feel worthy, the unworthiness that we believe uh, is the unworthiness that we seem to believe and perceive is false, but it's also the most prevalent illness that there is. It is absolutely the most prevalent problem or illness or difficulty that there is. And so <clears throat> the cure is really to allow ourselves to be in that flow of giving and receiving love, giving and receiving love fully and completely. And then all kinds of healing breaks out over our entire life. And as we come to Valentine's Day, some people say, I hate Valentine's Day. Some people find Valentine's Day frustrating, frightening, unnerving. They feel like, oh, if they have a partner, they can't really do it right. If they don't have a partner, then they can't do it right. And so there's a lot of people that have issues with Valentine's Day, but I say, let's just love fully and not make it romantic or not romantic, just love, love, love. It has, being loving has healed so much of my life. And so for me, I think a part of my spiritual practice is being loving being loving with myself, being loving with others. I used to be um, very short-tempered, very sarcastic, um, complaining, difficult. So just being loving as a spiritual practice has been deeply, profoundly healing for me. And one of the most healing ways I've learned to be loving is that if I make a mistake, and now I don't even need to think about this anymore because it's just how I live, but I, it used to be something I had to really focus in on. If I made a mistake, then instead of judging myself, I would be loving and compassionate with myself. And I realized that if I don't judge, then there's never anything to forgive. If I don't judge, there's never anything to forgive. And so practicing non-judgment with myself so that I don't have to forgive myself anymore for judging myself or for behaving badly, all of that, uh, that negativity really began to fall away when I practiced being loving with myself. So again, it's the practicing by having patience, being kind, being generous with myself. And uh, folks in Master for Living have heard me say that I started to uh, call myself sweetheart and darling. I got that from Thich Nhat Hanh. Uh, the wonderful Buddhist um, teacher who was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize by Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, and so saying to myself, sweetheart, it's okay. You spilled the milk. It's okay. You took a wrong turn. It's okay. You forgot that thing. It's okay. You you broke the glass. It's what's what's important here is to stay loving, to stay in your loving heart. And to really know that that is what is most important. That is the most beneficial thing. And to actively practice it 
it changed everything for me so much because I really used to be a mean and difficult person. And I remember one time um, I was on a date and um, uh, with a man that uh, we, we needed to stop at his home and um, I can't remember why we were going to wait, do something, and then we were going to go back out again. And so um, I hadn't been to his house before, and we just had started dating. And he said um, uh, he had a, a daughter who was like 20 years old or something. And he said, uh, my daughter's not here, and we have a cat. You won't see the cat. Nobody ever sees the cat. The cat doesn't come out for anyone except my daughter. Um, so we sat in the living room and we were talking, having some tea. And uh, all of a sudden the cat comes out, jumps up on the sofa and comes and sits next to me. And he's like, oh my God, oh my God, what's happening? Oh my God, this is like St. Francis or something. What What is happening? This cat... I never get to sit next to the cat. The cat doesn't sit next to me. And, you know, I live with this cat. And I I just attributed it to I was a very safe person at that point in my life and still today. Uh, and the cat knew it, could feel it. And uh, I was so grateful for things like that that happened in my life that showed me Okay, maybe you're not a mean girl. Maybe you're not a bad person. Maybe you're not those things you think you are or have thought you are. And so I, I know that so much healing can happen for us when we have the willingness to be loving, to practice being loving. So that's why in Masterful Living, I say our spiritual practice foundationally is love and gratitude, love and gratitude, being grateful for things as they are, even if we don't like them, recognizing that everything is helpful. That's what it says in the development of trust in chapter four, the manual for teachers. It takes great learning to recognize that everything is helpful. And then you've got lesson 135. What could you not accept if you but knew that everything was gently planned by one whose only purpose is your good? That's paragraph 18. And everything works together for good. And there are no exceptions. Now, it doesn't mean everything is good. You know, everything is intended for good. But it works together for good. So that's the grace of God. So when something happens that's very painful and we feel like, well, how could this be for good? You know, someone's child takes their own life. How could that be for anybody's good? We can't conceive of it and we don't need to be able to. But what we can know is that the grace of God is always offering itself. The grace of God is always revealing itself. It, it has no days off. It's always in operation. It, the grace of God is what brings restoration. It brings healing and transformation. And so we are entitled to miracles. We're entitled to the grace of God. It's always there for us. It cannot be taken from us. We can deny it. And the way we deny the grace of God is to say, that's bad. That shouldn't happen. I wish that didn't happen. Very tempting to say, I wished it didn't happen. I wish I had never done that. It's very tempting to say those things. <clears throat> but if everything works together for our good and everything is gently planned by one whose only purpose is our good, then let us just be grateful for the good that is available to us now if we are willing to receive it and to accept it. And that's what our work is to do, to be willing to receive it and accept it. And I find that the biggest challenge most spiritual students have is they reject their good. 
They reject the answer prayer because it doesn't come the way they wanted it to come. <clears throat> it just happens all the time, all the time, all the time. You know, I think of my friends cast opposite each other in a play. And at the time, um, you know, they didn't like each other. Oh, I've got to be in this play with this person. Well, a few months later, they're madly in love. So you never know what is going to occur. <clears throat> but if you think it's bad and you're determined to keep that label on it, can you actually accept the grace of God? Or are you saying, God is torturing me. God is making my life a misery. That's a very tempting thing. That's an old thing like the saints are going to rescue me. Oh, but they're not rescuing me. So they must not love me because I'm bad. God doesn't love me because I'm bad. God loves other people, but not me. I'm being tortured by God. These are the old ways of thinking that we are undoing and they're ingrained in us. So it is our opportunity to approach everything with love and gratitude and to welcome the grace of God to transform our view. Pain is a wrong perspective. So let's be willing to re uh, renew our view so that we can see with divine vision instead of with ego. So, that's an act of self-love to be willing to lay the burden of our opinions ju and judgments down and to see more clearly what's actually occurring right in front of us. I, I just can't say it often enough that love is the healer. And so having an active practice of being loving is going to heal your heart, your mind, your life, your finances, your body, everything. But it may not be healed in the way you would like it to be healed. Because what if the healing requires you to have to be in a play with someone that annoys you and frustrates you? And if you're willing to just be present to them, maybe you would fall in love with them. But if you cling to the view of this is not good, this is not what I want, even maybe quitting because uh, I don't want to work with this person, you miss a huge opportunity. We've all had experiences where we um, had to engage uh, with someone that we didn't really like, someone that we found annoying and frustrating and disturbing, but then ultimately we came to really love them. We came to really have compassion for them. And we became very, very grateful for them in our lives. I certainly have people like that in my life. And I'm so grateful that I do and that I was willing to turn the other cheek, as Jesus would say, offer a new perspective, offer a new, willing to see with new eyes. And so to me, that's what turn the other cheek means, to, to look at it from another perspective, to see it from another view, to offer another perspective, another view. And what could be more loving than being willing to say, if it, if it is bothering me and it's upsetting me, then I must not be seeing it clearly. Right? If it's bothering me and upsetting me, then I must not be seeing it clearly. And I can go the other way. In fact, I need to go the other way in order to be back in my right mind. So turning it over to spirit to show us how to be loving. Sometimes I've stood in front of people and I've thought to myself, <clears throat> this was a practice I used to do. I don't know how to love this person. I don't feel like I want to love this person, but I know that I can love this person. I know that I will love this person. So God, you love them. Show me how to love them. Love them through me. I will be 
that the one that loves them, you're loving them through me. I am fully on board for that. Because the most wonderful feeling in the world is not being loved. It is being the lover, right? The most wonderful feeling in the world is when you love somebody and they let you love them. Right. So that's the thing about dogs. That's why dogs are live a good, happy life is because they let you love them and they let you let them love you. They're so good at that. They are our teachers. So much. Oh, well, let's take this into our heart right here. I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and place your hands on your heart. Hmm. And I'm going to invite you to just call to mind, where are you withholding the love from yourself? Where are you withholding the love from yourself? Either by not allowing yourself to love someone else and let the love flow to them, or being unkind to yourself? Where can you open up the floodgates of love in your own mind, in your own heart, in your own relationship with yourself? Is there any place that you know that you're actively blocking the flow of love? Could you open to the flow of love? And what is the healing that you'd like to have when that love is flowing? What is the healing that you'd like to have when that love is flowing? So allowing ourselves to have clear insight about ways that we can actively open to the flow of love, be in the flow of love, shine forth the flow of love, and invite that healing into our lives. And what difference would it make in your life if you do this? What is the difference that it would make in your life? What difference would it make in your life? What is the healing that you would like to have in your life? What is the healing that you would like to have in your life? All right. I am going to invite Ted here to give us another song. While we continue to contemplate this.
If I only had one wish to make There would be no mistake It would be love, 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 love Love that would lift the hearts of men Bring peace to the land It would be love, 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 love Oh, the lessons in life are the burdens Forgiveness is the first step that we take the second is to realize our oneness And to trust in love in every choice we make That's the power of love If I only get one wish to make There would be no mistake It would be love, 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 love Love that would lift the hearts of men Bring peace to the land It would be love, it would be love it would be love, 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 love. Oh, thank you, Ted. Perfect. Oh, thank you so much. All right. So we're going to go into our breakout rooms. That's a thing that we do here. And in the, the breakout, I'm inviting you to do a short share. It's not a long breakout, short share about whatever came, came up for you in, in the contemplation and make it, see if you can make a declaration of maybe what you're going to do differently, how you're going to look at things differently. So we won't be out in this breakout very long. Uh, I invite you to make sure everybody in your group can share if you uh, if they would like to. Don't have to, but if you'd like to. Here we go. I'm opening the rooms. All right. And let's see here. Here's Sarah. Let me spotlight you. All right. Yeah. Ted, anything else you'd like to share? Me? Yeah. On this topic, we're in the Facebook Live while everybody else is in the breakout. Uh... You know, there is so, it's so limited where we can go today um, and to have something like this, this type of a meeting is unlike anything else. It's, it's better. It, it, it's a lift for me. I look so forward to it. I mean, if you notice, I, I can't stop smiling because <laughs> it is, I think. I see it as such a, I see it as such a powerful gift to, you know, uh, in, I, I can't believe there aren't hundreds of people joining us, um, it, to know that these messages, the meditation, and, you know, hopefully the music, <laughs> is all just to bring us to heal and just take those steps you know it's a journey everybody's on an individual journey 
And just as you were mentioning, you know, we may not know it until we spend a little time together that we're kindred spirits. It isn't until it is until then you don't know. Um, I just I am just so happy and just so blessed to have an opportunity to come and share the music. Um, um, and I appreciate Jennifer, you giving me that opportunity. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for saying yes. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing with us. One hundred percent. Sarah, I'm going to turn it over to you, and I need to go let Bodie in. She's barking, and she wants to come in, so I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so Jennifer's message today about the animals, the dogs, letting you love them, I heard her say that a long time ago, and the message has really stuck with me. And it's actually really relevant because um, we just brought home a new puppy on uh, December 31st, um, he's a little dachshund and I am a dachshund lover. I had two dachshunds um, 10 years ago and we put our last one down exactly a year ago this weekend. And I said, I don't want another dog. Um, you know, I don't want to have to take care of it because the one that we put down was 17 and he was, um, you know, he was struggling. I was cleaning up a lot of messes. I had to make his food and, you know, it was a lot of work. And, um, I saw a message somewhere, you know, when you're scrolling through Facebook and all the social media about how having a dog in your home is calming to your nervous system because you can pet them and love on them. And I, I was feeling kind of stressed in December with the end of the year. And I thought, you know what? I need that. <laughs> I need that again in my life. And so we brought him home and it it has been, you know, it's not without its challenges having a, a puppy. They want to chew everything and, you know, you're still potty training, but it it has been nice to be able to express love that way and, and give and receive love that way. Jennifer, I was just telling um, Ted how your message is relevant because we brought home a new puppy on December 31st. Oh. And, yeah. And, you know, I, I had heard you say this before about dogs and, and the message stuck with me. And it is nice to just be allowed to give love, an unrequited love like that. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Oh, puppies are so amazing. <laughs> He's at my feet right now. <laughs> oh, what kind of a dog is he? A dachshund. Oh, sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's napping right now. He he got uh, neutered on Thursday, so he's got like a neck pillow cone thing around his neck. <laughs> yeah, your daughter must love having a puppy. Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah. He does. They're a lot of work. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I I watched uh, you know hundreds of training videos to learn how to train Bodhi when I first got her, but it paid off. She's a really good dog now, pretty much most of the time. That's good. Yeah. 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 And you know, we we brought him home from Pennsylvania and he rode all the way from Pennsylvania to Texas on my lap. And he was so good. He was so well behaved. <laughs> and and we've noticed with the energy in our home that I seem to be his safe place. And my husband and daughter, my daughter is where he goes to play. And then, you know, he he loves us all. But I'm, when he needs comfort, he comes to my lap. So that's good. I'm I'm happy about that. <laughs> yeah, he feels how loving you are. Yeah. Aww. Well, your message was a good reminder to to remember to be loving, and that's the core practice. It is sometimes it's very very challenging, but the, what I've learned is just like you know a lot about fitness training, so you know that um, when we can um, break through that resistance and keep going even when it seems hard, <clears throat> even when it seems like, uh, I, I just don't like this person, I don't want to love them. And we can just say, well, but I have a commitment to be loving anyway. 
So I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not taking a break just because it feels hard today. Uh, then we can build that muscle. You know, it's like if you're working out in the gym, how are you going to build any muscle if you never lift any weight? Right? How are you going to build any muscle if you don't lift any weight? So if you're crying about lifting some weight, it's like, well, do you really want to build that muscle? Yeah. I remember years ago, somebody in Masterful Living, maybe it was in Finding Freedom. I think it was in Finding Freedom, actually. They said, I, from now on, I want my knee-jerk reaction to be loving, to be love. My knee-jerk reaction. Yeah. It's not always easy, but it's always worthwhile. Yeah. How about you, Ted? Anything more you'd like to say on this topic? Oh, I hear you talking about pets and, and uh, as you know, yeah, I put Cody down, you know, last, well, before last year. I still miss him. In, um, in, in yoga, um, if I set, you know, like <laughs> during the meditation, because he was part dachshund, you know, he was a mixed poodle. He was a Heinz 57. But he just thought, oh, there he goes. Just cur curl up on your lap, you know. And uh, and I still sometimes, especially during yoga, it's I just can feel him just laying on my lap, even though. So and it, it's a comfort because I know that he too is spirit and it's it's not anything that is is lost temporarily but yeah it's gonna be fun <laughs> what's your dog's name sarah his name's hershey he's a he's dark brown and we got him in pennsylvania so <laughs> we thought it was appropriate <laughs> that's adorable yeah <laughs> Uh, well, I encourage you to teach Hershey some tricks. Oh, we probably will. He knows his name, but I think that's about it right now. <laughs> oh, here comes Bodie. Well, um, we've still got a couple minutes left here. And uh, I, I would invite either of you, do you have um, an experience uh, where you were loving when it was difficult and it really paid off, either of you? I just had one. You know, okay. I I don't get this, I don't sing out much. Okay. And um, and we're in the, where we are now, they have a swimming pool there and they have a little tiki bar type thing and uh, there's some other guys that come in and usually play on a Fridays and but one of them got a bigger a nicer gig and was gone so there was an open slot and I said okay I'll, I'll do it um, now we're talking about we're talking about starting at five o'clock in the afternoon so I'm not talking about you know a bar time you know type thing and there was a woman there I don't know uh, her husband was there um, but she took to me um, in a very 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 pleasant way I mean so it wasn't like you know I, I felt like she was being you know sexual by any means it wasn't she she just like oh oh you're gonna sing I I love to sing can I sing with you and and I realized that she had uh, been at the tiki bar a little earlier and uh, wasn't in the, the right frame of mind. Um, and my first response was, oh my gosh, please, husband, grab her, leave me alone. That, you know, that's <laughs> what, but that's not what came out. And just, you know, it's like her name was Helen. I just was, and so here I am, I'm, I'm sitting on a stool playing my guitar and she is standing next to me with her arm over my shoulder. And, you know, my wife is there. I, I've got all these friends there. Um, 
And I just, I was not upset. I was not, I mean, I just said, you know, she's here, I gotta love her. And, uh, and it turned out to be just right because at, you know, at a point in time, he finally just came over and just <laughs> gently walked her away. But it could have been a whole different experience if I would have said, you know, you gotta get, you gotta get off, you gotta get away. You, can, you know, you can't, talk, you can't <laughs> be doing this. But instead I just loved her. I mean, I just, and it was, it was actually turned out to be beautiful. People even commented that, you know, that it was, uh, they were waiting for me to say something, you know, like that wouldn't have been nice, but I never did, never had to. And it, and it, it wasn't for 10 minutes. I'm talking about almost 40 minutes. It was not a, yeah, it was not that. Um, it everybody, like everybody ended up loving her. I mean, they, and then when she was leaving everybody, they were saying bye to her and everything. So there was a situation that could have been gone the other way. Right. It sounds like you're saying she was a little tipsy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I would, I, strum a chord. I would strum a chord and she thought I was singing one a different song. So she's standing there singing a song. I'm singing a different song, but she's singing a, a song in my ear, a different song, you know, <laughs> not in tune. Not... <laughs> wow. You just have to laugh, but you, you, you would just have to laugh. Right. If, if it was happening to someone else, I would have been applauding. I think, I think it was just would have been crazy, but it ended end up being just a warm fuzzy and people were commenting about it the whole thing it, it ended up just making it, making it so nice <laughs> wow okay well thank you uh for that story ted let's see here how was the breakout how was the breakout was it good yeah excellent yeah, I love those breakouts. They are so good. People always tell me that. Thank you for the breakouts. All right, so here's what's going to happen now. I'm going to make a few announcements. Ted will give us another song. Sarah will give us another prayer. And then we'll be on our way either Super Bowling or not Super Bowling. However it goes for you. <laughs> so uh, announcements. Um, well, last week we started the quantum counseling program with 16 different A Course Miracles teachers. And if I do say so myself, the first class was excellent. It was just really, really good. I've gotten so much good feedback on it from folks. And so you can still join. We still have 17 classes left. It goes all the way through December. Uh, different Course Miracles teachers sharing about healing, working at the level of the mind in our quantum counseling program. Uh, next Sunday, I have another workshop that I'm doing, which is Unblock the Flow of Time, Energy, and Money. Unblock the Flow of Time, Energy, and Money. And so that is next Sunday. Uh, and then we don't quite have the sales page ready yet to the registration page, but I'm offering a counseling training intensive in person in Scottsdale, Arizona in the middle of May and following that up Memorial Day weekend with how to create and lead workshops that make a difference. Uh, so these are two in-person events. Uh, one is seven days and one is four days. So it's a wonderful opportunity to do a lot of deep healing work and to build your skills. So those, those are coming up. All right. And those are in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, I think those are the main things that are coming up here. So I am going to turn it over to Ted and 
let him share and give us another song. Thanks, Jennifer. You know, uh, during the breakouts, we were talking about the things uh, that we had asked for and the things uh, such as pets that are just loving and something easy to love, as Jennifer mentioned. So in keeping with the Valentines, uh, I want to sing this particular song for, for if you bring to mind someone that you may not be able, because maybe they transitioned, that you aren't going to be able to say Happy Valentine's Day to. Um, so this song is to a little lift for that. You'll get it. One day, my love, our hearts will meet again. The Lord will join us in everlasting life. No pain, no rain, a world filled with peace. Till then we sing, our hearts will meet again. In a world that knows no pain, where love is free to grow, our families, they wait for us in our heavenly home. Yes, one day, my love, our hearts will meet again. The Lord will join us in everlasting life no rain no pain a world filled with peace till then we sing our hearts will meet again death is no mystery we are to understand it's a heavenly birth from this earth it's all in god's plan that one day my love our hearts will meet again the lord will join us in everlasting life no rain no pain a world filled with peace till then we sing our hearts will meet again our hearts will meet again Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you for this opportunity, Jennifer. Meet myself. Thank you, Ted. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, you have to. I don't know if you can see the comments there. <laughs> um, in the chat, um, Missy Solomon said, "Thank you, Ted. Your song made my eyes leap." Yeah. Oh, all right. So, well, we've had a Super Bowl Sunday loving <laughs> experience here. You know, and for those of you who are going to Super Bowl parties and things like that, you know, sometimes those situations can be kind of intense, especially in the political climate we have going on right now. So having an extra dose of love to take with you is a really good thing. Yeah. I'm going to turn it over to Sarah for a closing prayer.
Thank you so much, Jennifer. We are so grateful and so thankful for the service today. We are going forth with the heart of this message, knowing that we are being more loving right now to everyone we meet, everyone that we come across today and in the future. Grateful for this beautiful reminder. Grateful to know that the core of what we are doing is being the love, being the light here in this world and giving and receiving love is what we're here to do. We are open to it. We are allowing it and we're grateful. So just sharing the benefit of this blessing, sharing the love that we got to experience here today and the upliftment for which we are so, so grateful and in gratitude, we allow it to be. And so it is. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Sarah. God bless you.